Chilean devil rays are quite amazing animals. Every time we learn something new, the more we understand that we know very little about them. You must be there to excite them. On this expedition, the main goal is to have an overlay of the high resolution habitat use of devil rays in their three dimensional environment. It's very seldom that you have the chance to have what this ship offers in terms of sampling the whole environment and at the same time doing the tagging that we do. Thank you. Sorry, keep you waiting. This is the most oceanic of all of the manta and devil rays and that's why it's also the least known. We want to understand why they do what they do and they do really, really interesting and surprising things. The devil ray aggregations, it's kind of a special story they actually occur every year, at the same time of the year, in the same places. Well, they aggregate in some very specific sea mounts. Finding devil rays in large groups is quite important because these animals tend to be solitary most of their lives. They're also highly migratory. They depend on the open ocean to do their thing, but every year they come back to the Azores or even to the same spot within the Azores. There must be something special that they're doing. The Azores may play an important role in terms of their reproductive behavior. Places like the Azores might hold a very high importance, first, to understand the ecology of these animals, and second, to understand what we can do to better protect them in the future. This really is one of the best natural laboratories to do this kind of work. It's kind of a promised land for a marine biologist. The Azores is right on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, at the largest mountain ridge on Earth. And so you're in the middle of the open ocean, but actually you're not. You have a lot of structures that make this place much more productive than you would expect. And that means potential food for these migratory predators. One of the things that a lot of people don't know about megaphone is that they depend on these mesoplagic prey, which are small organisms that live in the mesophotic or the twilight zones. It was a surprise when scientists started to put tags on these predators and see, oh, they all go down there. Are you feeling well to commence diving? I'll put you in, Richard, as well, eventually. The tags we're using are what we call multi-sensor tags. So they not only measure where the animals are going, how they are moving. We can measure temperature, we can measure salinity, we can measure depth. And with cameras, we can also see where they are going and how the environment looks like. They are designed to be deployed non-invasively. We deploy this harness-like attachment which we do by free diving, which is also very light in terms of our presence. They can be programmed to release after just a couple of hours or a couple of weeks. Today was a very good day. We successfully tagged two mobile in the morning. Right now, all the tags that we have in the water are uh, 48 hours. So the day after tomorrow, we'll have the first tags popping and then we'll have plenty of tags to recover. Once you put a tag on these animals, they will show you that they go into the depths in previously unimaginable ways. They don't just chill at the surface. They can dive to almost 2,000 meters depth. You start to see that it's not just a simple going down and coming back up. You see there's a search pattern, for example, then that indicates that might be looking for food. The closest we can get to actually understanding and proving that these predators are diving and doing these complex movements because they are trying to access this food source down there is by matching the information from their movements with all the measurements of the water. The whole idea is to assess the movement of these predators or megafauna within the three-dimensional prey fields. Until now, we were able to look at movement data from tags and relatively simple metrics of environmental data. Now, with combining all the assets with, in OceanX, 
we can actually build this cube, this two-dimensional cube of environmental information with not only great detail, but multiple variables. You can study the water column using echo sounders. We send the CTD down. Something else we do is we use eDNA, environmental DNA. We're gonna learn exactly what are the layers of the water column in terms of temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, and also what is the composition and the distribution of these deep organisms that we think play a really important role in the movement of the megafauna. Hopefully you will start to put the pieces of the puzzle together and be able to say that the animals actually go down there to feed. So now we're looking for the tag 134. Our tags are equipped with the VHF uh, antennas and these are the receivers which we actually collect the pings out from the transmitters and that's how we can actually track the, the tags itself. Hopefully the ship will take us there. Flashlight, I need the light please. One of the things that we try to explain and understand better is how the large predators control their ecosystems. We know they have a very important role because they control the density of their prey. So if you remove all the big predators, then you create this imbalance. More or less all of them are in trouble, either because they're being overfished or because they were overfished in the past or because there's uh, serious problems with their habitat. And then of course there's the whole issue of climate change. For marine megafauna that don't really have discrete territories, the marine protected areas could potentially be more beneficial if they're actually moving, if they are dynamic. If we learn what are the elements that they're looking for and how they are changing over time in the ocean, then we can adapt the areas that we need to protect to where the animals are going to be today, tomorrow and the next day, not just immediately. The main challenge that everyone faces now is to understand how things are all interconnected. Life in the ocean is pretty much what really rules life on Earth as we know it.